Now, I have to say, a couple of months ago, I didn't think I was going to be in this spot because I really, really, really thought that things were heading down a path for WrestleMania XL. That were going to be very favorable to me. It was almost going to feel like I damn near fantasy booked that bitch. You were going to have The Rock taking on Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship. And that was going to close out the entire shabanga bang. You were getting these teases for John Cena versus Randy Orton. This time it counts one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. Maybe we're going to get finally our truth a singles match at WrestleMania against Tom and Nick Mysterio. Yes, you heard that right. You figure it out. Then, like, is it going to be Jade Cargill taking on Bianca Belair? There were lots of things a couple of months ago. I'm like, holy shit. I'm really going to be legitimately excited about WrestleMania 40. And now here we are less than 24 hours from the biggest show in wrestling this year, the biggest event for WWE. And instead of me kind of like ranting and raving about it, I've just gotten to this point where I've kind of withdrawn from it. I really don't give a fuck about this year's WrestleMania. Real talk. And I think some of that is just, I look at this card, it's kind of underwhelming and one of these, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. You got that guy back there, The Rock. He comes back and you get a reminder of, oh, that's what a dude is freaking like. That's what a real megastar looks like, talks like, walks like, acts like, feels like. Oh, there's none of those guys on the freaking roster. And then because of The Rock, and his magnitude and his magnificence, he kind of overpowers and overshadows every fucking thing else. To where now you get distracted because you want to see other things that aren't directly related to WrestleMania 40. And just the whole thing at this point, I'm very emotionally withdrawn. I don't know if I'm the only one. I presume I'm not the only one. But yeah, like I look at this card and it's, you know, selfishly for, my, for myself, I really don't give a fuck about much of any of this shit. And you're going to say, well, that's a big baby behavior. You know, that coming from especially the Cody crybabies means absolutely <laughs> dick. All right. Night one, though. Let's, let's look at this card. Rhea Ripley defends against Becky Lynch for the Women's World Championship. Okay. So either Rhea retains or Becky wins. Either way, I find myself increasingly not giving a fuck about either one of them. You know, there's certainly a very good chance that Sami Zayn versus Gunther is one of those matches of the weekend. Probably will be. I assume it will deliver. And I hope like hell Sami Zayn gets his moment and he beats Gunther for the title. You know, in some ways it's only a small repayment of and thank you for Sammy compared to the fact that last year he got harpooned, he got sabotaged um, and didn't get the WrestleMania main event spot against Roman that he fucking deserved. Anybody that thinks that Cody Rhodes should have been in that spot from a pure merit and deserving standpoint over Sami Zayn is fucking insane. Now it's so often the case with WWE, they're going to do whatever the hell they want no matter what, right? Um, but let, let Sammy win this one. <laughs> But like I said, I'm sure that match will be quite good. This six-pack tag team ladder match, this is, to me, one of those examples of you're trying to, good intentions here, right? Trying to get as many people on the biggest show of the year as possible. I get that. I understand it. I respect it. But you know, this is just going to evoke memories for me, old man yelling at the clouds, right, of, you know, you used to have the Money in the Bank ladder match was at WrestleMania, and now you're getting this instead. I'm sure this will be a crash test dummy spot fest that we'll enjoy. Only thing I give a fuck about with this one is that the Austin Truth wins. Give Miz, and especially R-Truth, his WrestleMania moment.
No disrespect to any of these other teams, but fuck all of them. Oh, what about the future? No, fuck that. Who cares? This is our truth's time. This is our truth's moment. He deserves that WrestleMania moment. He deserves that WrestleMania spotlight. He deserves that WrestleMania shine. And if you're not down with that, well, then fuck you. Fuck you. Um, but as again, as you can hear in my voice, like, just don't have a lot of fucks to give about night one. Jay versus Jimmy Uso, you know, it's one of those things that has a lot of story behind it. And in theory, you should be highly emotionally invested, but are you? It involves bloodline related business and it's not the rock. So no, I, I honestly don't give a fuck anymore at this point, right? It's appreciating the long-term play here to say, like, this deserves a WrestleMania match while also acknowledging, eh, maybe this was too slow of a burn, you waited too long, and now the interest just isn't there. That's how I feel right now. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like, on the one hand, I see um, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi on the same team, and I have all types of thoughts. All types of thoughts. And it's fantastic. Black girl magic. Fuck yeah. But I can't help but be disappointed that Bianca and Jade aren't taking it as a one-on-one -on -one fight here at Mania. I I'm disappointed about that. Now, you know, just because you don't get what you want immediately doesn't mean you won't get it at some point, certainly, right? Um, but damn, I could have had that. But the alternative is... I get those two plus Naomi on the same team. It is like Spank Bank Supreme for Schleggy. And I'll take that. I'll take that. Who gives a fuck about damage control? Like, I'm just going to be paying attention to Bianca and Jade and Naomi. Who gives a shit about those other three? Um, I'm a little surprised, admittedly, that Rey Mysterio and Dominic are facing off against each other again at WrestleMania. This time it's in a tag match. Um... You know, this is one of these things, I don't give a fuck about it, but I'm sure it can be really solid because it's Ray and it's Dominic and they know what the fuck they're doing. And you're going to say, well, what about Andrade and Santos Escobar? Well, let me come back to what I just said. We know Ray Mysterio knows what the fuck he's doing. Dominic Mysterio knows what the fuck he's doing. All that other shit is window dressing and is irrelevant, doesn't matter. Which honestly, like, that perfectly... Uh, encapsulates night one. You get to the main event tag match and none of the other shit matters. It's all window dressing. It's just killing time. This is night one's all about the bloodline Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth freaking Rollins. I mean, that's what this is about. You know, in the stipulation here, which way did they go? Do they have Rhodes and Rollins win and you get the bloodline is barred from ringside? They could go there, right? They could also have Rock and Roman win and the championship match on night two is held under bloodline rules. You know, you got to be honest here. Are you going to have R Roman eat the pinfall in night one? Or are you going to have the Rock eat the pinfall in night one? Feels, feels highly unlikely, right? Stranger shit has happened, but feels unlikely. It would seem especially ridiculous, but at this point, and probably, who gives a shit, irrelevant, to have Roman lose night one and then also lose in night two. But again, stranger shit has happened, and I don't even know if it matters at this point because they've made Roman such a secondary player in this piece. Like, if you think about it, he's the one that's the undisputed champion. He's the one that's main eventing night two, but he's become the third wheel in Rock and Cody Rhodes' program, in their feud. And Roman's been the champ for three and a half years. How the fuck do you manage to pull that off? Layered storytelling, this is not. You basically completely submarined the dude. Which unfortunately is a natural byproduct of bringing back the Rock and then panicking because you wanted to have the Rock versus Roman and then you listened to the Cody Crybabies and you had to fucking pivot and like all this shit went sideways. So some of you might say, hey, if you're going to go based off of old, like, Dusty type of story, you would have um, Cody and Rollins win night one, so that way Cody gets Roman one-on-one, -on -one, no interference from the bloodline, yada, yada, yada. 
And then imagine Seth Rollins comes out and fucking interferes and costs him a match. Whoa. Oh, there's your fucking heel turn right there, right? <laughs> or Seth Rollins comes out and helps Cody Rhodes, or somebody else comes out and helps Cody Rhodes, and he makes the fucking heel turn that he needs to make. I don't know. We'll see with night one, but again, all that other shit on night one. I'm sure Gunther and Sammy will be just fine. Uh, Ray and Dominic in their tag match, sure. The latter match, tag match, will be fine, but we're not going to give a lot of shit about that. I'll give a fuck about it. Jay, Bianca, and Naomi on the same team. Like, that's big, beautiful booties right there. Uh, but, but it's all about one match. It's all about the main event. And frankly, it's the same shit with night two, right? Like, this is the Rock, Rock's playground, and everybody's buried in the sandbox. Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. Do you really give a shit about that? At this point, just have Drew win it. Have him get his WrestleMania moment. You know... A match that had a lot of story to it that probably could have been more. But, I, again, I just don't really care about is Bailey and EO Sky for the Women's Championship. Eh. L.A. Knight and AJ Styles. TNA! TNA! But also feels like, eh, this was the best you had for L.A. Knight at this point? Feels like another guy that got submarine because of the Cody Rhodes, the Cody Cena machine. Um, yeah, don't even get me started about the triple threat for the U.S. Championship. You know, obviously you want Logan Paul in this spot, right? Well, that sucks. Why not have him and Bad Bunny wrestle one-on-one for the U.S. Championship? Like, there was supposed to be a different path here! There was supposed to be a different way, goddammit! Once in a lifetime, this time it counts, John Cena versus Randy Orton. I prayed on this. I consulted the three books of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. I send my Hail Hunters and everything. I don't ask God for much, and by God, he makes sure on a consistent basis that he exceeds the low expectations in terms of the downward trajectory and gives me even less than what I asked for, which is very simple. I just wanted John Cena versus Randy Orton, WrestleMania 40, once in a lifetime, this time it counts, and instead I get this abortion of a triple threat U.S. title match. Fuck this shit. Fuck it. Fuck it. You got a six-man Philadelphia street fight tag team match? All right, Team Lashley all the fucking way. Excuse me, excuse me. The Pride. I don't give a fuck what you call them. They just need to fucking go over. At least Bobby Lashley's got a match on the WrestleMania card. That's a positive development. But again, as you see, I'm flying through this really quickly because at the end of the day, it just doesn't fucking matter. Because night two is all about Roman and Cody. And even then, it's all about The Rock and whether The Rock's going to be involved or not. I guess it's round two. And you know, I did a video a couple of days ago talking about if wrestling is supposed to mirror real life, which when it's at its best, it often does, there was absolutely nothing there about Cody Rhodes that says he has to finish his story here. You know, the Buffalo Bills of the 90s didn't finish their story. The Utah Jazz in 97, 98 didn't finish their story against um, the Bulls. It took the Bulls four times to be able to finally finish their story against the Pistons in the playoffs. And I could go on and on and on. The 49ers in recent years haven't finished the story under Kyle Shanahan. Like, life doesn't always go your way. You don't always get what you freaking want. Um, but I'm sure it's going to happen, right? It has to happen at this point. And I've just resigned myself to that fate, and I just don't give a fuck and just get it over with. And you know what I think is fucked up about this? I think of this as similar to... HBK and Taker at 25, and then HBK and Taker at 26. There's always been that lingering thought to me of that match at 25 was fantastic, but no matter how great it was, it was still buried in the middle of the card. And then WrestleMania 26, now it's in the main event, but you're like, I saw a better match last year, and that mid-carded last year, yada, yada, yada. It's like, is a year too late to put it in the main event? Obviously, last year, Roman Cody was main event night two of WrestleMania. But at the end of the day, if you really take stock and inventory of this, really, honestly, 
This is the one place I kind of agree with the Cody Crybabies a little bit, is if you were going to do it, then you should have just done it a year ago and gotten it fucking over for everybody involved. Because now the people like me that don't want to see Cody do this, that don't want to see him as champion, are just going to be even more emotionally withdrawn from the product. The people that do want to see Cody win are not going to feel as excited and happy about it, no matter how much they might pretend or believe they are, as they would have last year. They'll still be very happy and they'll have their moment, but it won't be the same. It will happen and they will come back and say, well, we should have just fucking done it last year. We were right. It's like the WWE kind of booked themselves in this no-win situation where you made everybody else look like shit by comparison to The Rock. You took away a lot of the heat and the momentum of Roman trying to stubbornly cling to his spot as the head of the table, the tribal chief, against Cody Rhodes. You've taken some of the momentum away from Cody Rhodes. Like, just so many bad things here. Now, I'm going to sit there, obviously, and watch WrestleMania this weekend. And I'm sure some of these matches will be very good. But in terms of my enjoyment of the product, I'm not too optimistic. All I'm basically going to give a fuck about is what's The Rock going to do in night one and night two. And then I'm also going to remember, oh, that's right. They didn't give me the big match that I fucking wanted that they should have fucking done because they had to cave like a bunch of pussies. So they did all this shit with Cody just to drag it out a fucking year unnecessarily and then we're bitches in the process to get there. WrestleMania XL, like, this is more than just Roman numerals. It's supposed to be a catchphrase. This was a motto. It's supposed to be bigger and larger than life. And the only thing that's been bigger and larger than life about the buildup to WrestleMania 40 is goddamn Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And everybody else feels like an amateur by comparison.